you are going to get soul lifting messages, faith based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Church, thank you. Thank you so much. Pastor, thank you. Thank you so much for the opportunity. And I trust that the Lord will bless us this afternoon. In Jesus' name. Can we hold hands together and just pray in the Spirit in one minute? Asking the Lord to grant us the Spirit of Revelation. Someone praying. The seeing eye and the hearing ear grant unto me in the name of Jesus. Shabatu sapratu skelepa hashada balakusia. Father, we bless you. Hallelujah. Jesus, we enthrone you. We proclaim you are King. in the midst of all. We raise you high with our breath. Lift your hands, lift your voices, and let's worship him. And as we worship your throne, and as we worship Come, Lord Jesus, and take your place. One more time. And as we worship, we worship you. Holy Spirit, we receive understanding in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Please be seated. God bless you. Thank you. I want to share with us very briefly um,
on a few things that I believe are vital ingredients that can help a believer to excel, that can help a people to rise to the fullness. Remember, the Bible says that God gave the fivefold or fourfold, as you would like to see it, for the equipping of the saints. Are we together? That the saints now matured will do the work of the ministry. And that we all together as a family of faith will come into the fullness of the stature of the measure of Christ. And so conferences like this are designed to bring us to levels of specific spiritual understanding. So that we are not shadow boxing as to what principles are responsible for what outcomes we desire. Praise the Lord. Let me start this evening um, from one of the, the teachings of Paul to his son in the gospel, Timothy. First Timothy, please, chapter 4. Let's look at verse 15. First Timothy chapter 4 and verse 15. It says, meditate upon these things. Give yourself wholly to them. And then it leaves you with an assurance that your profiting will not only be there, but it will appear unto all. Hallelujah. Meditate upon this body of spiritual truth that I give unto you. Paul is teaching his son in the gospel. He says, give yourself wholly to them that thy profiting will appear unto all. The second scripture I want us to look at is Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. Dr. Luke is writing to Theophilus and he's showing him the basis for writing the synoptic version of the gospel according to Luke. Please leave it there. Um, it says, for as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us. We're reading to verse 4. Even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning, Luke is speaking now, were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. Verse 3. He said, it seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things. This is a dimension that is a possibility that a man can sustain perfect understanding, accurate understanding of all things from the very first to write unto thee in order most excellent Theophilus. Why? Verse 4. Let's read together please. One to read. That thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. In other words, I do not want you to believe just because you respect the teacher. I want you to understand the basis from whence these truths came from so that your conviction will not only be on your confidence in the teacher but the validity of the truth. Are we together now? So that you will know the certainty that the truths you are being told and the truths that are being revealed are not cunningly devised fables. They are not opinions of a man. They are not ideas of a denomination. The certainty of the things that you have believed. It was Paul that said, for I know whom I have believed. He said, and I am persuaded. It's not just I know what I believe. I know the source and I am persuaded. That he is able. It's important that we build convictions. That we not only believe because we trust the speaker. But we must come to a point where we understand the systems of the kingdom. And we can place our faith in God and the integrity of his word. Hallelujah. So the things that by the grace of God have been communicated here upon this altar and that which I'll be sharing are not opinions. It is dangerous to teach opinions. Opinions are subjective. Are we together now? Our experiences differ. So when you build a doctrine out of opinions, it is dangerous. But the things that we communicate are truths that are backed up by God's own integrity and will work without reservation. If you believe it, say amen. Hallelujah. 
Jesus <clears throat> spent three and a half years mentoring a group of people, first the 12, and then occasionally the 70 would come, and then he would have a crowd of people. And he held several conferences during his walk uh, upon the earth. <clears throat> and in one of those sessions, he began his mentorship session with what we call the Beatitudes. He began to teach them on the ways of the kingdom. Remember that he was introducing to them a kingdom and a concept of living. Are we together? That was uh, very different from that which they had known, being under the Roman government. And then when Jesus gets to chapter 13, Matthew, please, and verse 11, he makes a very interesting statement that will be the basis of my communication this evening. Jesus says, it has been given. It has been given unto you, Covenant Christian Center, to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. The mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. It has been given unto you to come into a place of comprehension where you understand a body of spiritual knowledge called the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Now, Maybe I should digress for a minute and explain to you uh, my perspective, what I believe is the difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. Because Jesus spoke about the kingdom of God and he spoke about the kingdom of heaven. I believe, according to the authority of scripture, that the kingdom of God represents every sphere where the influence of God can reach. Where the influence of God can reach. And that includes everywhere. Heaven, earth, and hell. Where can I hide from your presence? So his presence stretches to every realm and every domain of existence. Anywhere the government of God can extend to is called the kingdom of God. But the kingdom of heaven is that portion of the kingdom of God where in experience the life and the culture of heaven has been allowed to find expression. Are we together now? The portion, wherever it is that the government, the culture of heaven is allowed to find expression in experience, that is the manifestation of the kingdom of heaven. So he's saying, please leave it there again, Matthew chapter 13, that there are mysteries that make heaven the way it is. Please look up. That the dexterity and the order and the excellence in heaven is not just because God is there. There is a body of spiritual knowledge that makes the results that we find in heaven. Are we together? And he is saying now unto you inhabitants of the earth it has been given. That you can also come into a comprehension of the truths that govern the sphere of heaven so that you can reproduce the same within your territory. This is what it means, thy kingdom come and thy will be done in the earth as it is in heaven. So that when we handle this body of spiritual truth called the mysteries of the kingdom, we are able to reproduce the power, the prosperity, the grace, the possibilities that are only affordable in heaven. This is what makes us supernatural. The ability to transport a dimension of living that cannot be gotten from the earth realm. Are we together now? And the Bible tells us that these truths called mysteries, they are not mysteries because um, God enjoys them being secrets. Mysteries are a generic name that is used in the New Testament to capture a body of spiritual truth that can only be revealed by the Spirit. Are we together? These truths cannot be revealed just by education, secular enlightenment. It will take the ministry of the Holy Spirit to bring the saints into the comprehension. That's why it's called a mystery. It's a body of truth that is privy to a people. Are we together? Blessed be the name of the Lord. So it has been given unto us to know, to comprehend, to come into the understanding of the mysteries of of the kingdom and when we have this understanding the bible lets us know that we will reign 
we will be able to walk practically in dominion. Now, I want to share with us, because our time is limited, I will only take um, maybe one or two of these these keys that the Bible calls the mysteries of the kingdom. And then afterwards, we'll just have some time to pray and trust God to bless our hearts. Hallelujah. I have studied my Bible by the grace of God and I have submitted myself to the wisdom that spans across the body. And I have learned from scripture and from experience that nothing in life is by mistake. Nobody rises by mistake, like I shared yesterday. Nothing happens by mistake. The Bible says to walk circumspectly, Ephesians chapter 5, as wise and not as unwise. And where is the wisdom? Capture all of the keys that can help you redeem time because the days are evil. So your wisdom is your ability to have dominion over time. Are we together now? The Bible says whoever can access the secrets that give you an advantage over time, you are walking in wisdom. Hmm. The greatest gift God gave man aside salvation is time. Are we together now? And the unit of destiny is time. Whatever affects your time affects your destiny. Are we together? And it so happens that our lives, um, many of us, uh, well, well, it's not the case in, in, in most parts of the, the, the West here, the, the Southwest. Um, there's a, a heightened understanding of the things of God. So most young people grow up in families that know God. So it's very easy to connect them to the things of God. But it's not so around other parts of the nation. You would have to spend a very significant part of your life before you come into the knowledge of God. And already just for, just for knowing God late, time is already against you. If you get born again at age 30, it looks like you are young, but it takes time to know God. It takes time to argue about the Holy Spirit until you finally open up your heart to receive him. And then taking advantage of the prayer language to build your spirit. And then you now, if you are fortunate to be under a pastor that loves God, it will save you years of error and deleting and rewriting and deleting. Are we together now? Please follow my teaching. We are talking about time redemption here. The Bible says to walk circumspectly. The word circumspect means accurately. That means you do not have time to dilly-dal and shadow box and guess around, make mistakes. You will not always have the time to correct it. So our work in this earth requires a measure of accuracy. And it says in doing that, you have dominion over time and you walk in wisdom when you master time. Ask a dying man what he would want. He would not tell you real estate. Ask a dying man what he would want. He would not tell you a political position. Ask a dying man what he would want. He will not tell you he wants more degrees and all of that as important as they are. A dying man's request is more time. Please look up. You have to understand this. The real asset of a believer is not just land. It's not just investments. It's time. Whatever attacks your time has attacked your life time. It takes time to know God. It takes time to raise godly children. It takes time to build anything that lasts. It takes time to build a great church, to build a great business. And the devil is aware of this. So he helps you live a fruitless life by interrupting your time. Are we together now? If you do not understand this this, um, this introduction, my message may not make sense. The secrets of the kingdom, among other things, help you to exercise dominion over time so that you can redeem time. Why? The days are evil. The days are evil. That means it is possible to be a graduate and just because your father 
had a vendetta with someone else, you will suffer for 20 years before you get a job because someone vowed to punish your father through you. Are we together? And if you do not know how to redeem time, you will be a victim of many things. Hmm. Time. Why do we want to prosper? It's not just to prove a point. Prosperity has a, a unique ability to redeem time. Are you getting what I'm saying now? The, the time wastage that comes when you are poor, many people have not reflected on it. If you reflect on it, you will hate poverty, uh, not just because, uh, how, I, I, hope, I hope I'm alright, can I, can I? So when you hate poverty, if you just hate it because it makes you suffer, it's not, it's not a valid reason enough. You must be able to attack it from the interruption that it provides for your time. When you wake up in the morning and sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow, for instance, and then one day your little child calls you an uncle because it takes time to know your child. And the devil knows that once you have the keys in place, you will have time to serve God, you will have time to be serious. Notice, before I continue, once upon a time the nation of Israel, when Moses came to cry their exodus to Pharaoh, and he said, look, the God of the Hebrews appeared to me and said, let my people go. Pharaoh looked at him and said, ah, I see. We give you straw and you just walk. So you have a little time to call upon God. Now stop giving them straw. The time they used to pray, let them use it to look for straw. And immediately they told Moses, don't talk to Pharaoh again. We will remain in bondage. Time. Time is very, very important. Oh, teach us to number our days, he says. Not because we're afraid of dying. He says that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. So the Bible says to walk circumspectly as wise and not as unwise, redeeming the time. Why? The days are evil. Let me tell you what that means. By default, every man's life carries a disadvantage. Listen. Just follow me. You will understand what I'm saying. By default, there is no advantage anywhere for any man. You introduce systems of advantage into your destiny as you go. The first of them being salvation. Are you getting what I'm saying? That means that when you have two people who have to live their lives by default, it's like making do with whatever grows in a farm. And what grows in a farm without being planted is weed. Are we together now? So I come from a family, for instance, with no advantage. And now it is my responsibility under God to understand God and his ways and then introduce to my destiny systems of advantage. Are we together? That begin to correct the, the errors that I met. So you come from a family where the first person builds a house at 50. It's not a testimony. You come from a family where something is wrong when you are blessed early. You see, all these kinds of things. Now you come to a point where you know the Lord and you love the Lord. And the responsibility is upon you to take advantage of the provisions that the kingdom provides to start correcting. This is why we have things like restoration. Restoration is a system of advantage. And I will restore what? The years. Not just the things. The years. Because when you lose time, you really lost. I will restore the years. I hope you know, um, please, next time I call two people, um, if you are not one of these gentlemen on suits, just, just sit quietly, huh? please. So let me have two people. I said it. Uh, Please, come, sirs. Oh, no, no, no. Can I have a, another person? That, yes, come. Come. You two come. Thank you. Watch this. Let's celebrate them as they come. You stand here. You two stand here. Watch this. I want to illustrate something. Now, both of you just follow me carefully. This is, this is, this, this, um, two people living out their destinies. Let's start. Now, we call this delay. Keep going. 
This man wants to move forward, move slowly, but this one has been delayed for 10 years. If I remove the constraint and he's moving, this is progress, not restoration, because he's still delayed. There is a provision in the kingdom that can pick you and bring you back here. Listen, so that if if you look at my life, you will not find the gap that the delay provided. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Please come again, sir. Watch this. Again, we have two people. Let's, let's assume that they were married the same time, okay? And then this man now has not been able to have a child, one year, two years, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If you give birth, it's a testimony, but it's not yet restoration. So when, because if you will space your children three, three years, under normal circumstances, you will need nine years from the time. Are you seeing that now? And so if God gives you triplets... He didn't just give you children. He did something to time. Please understand this. Now, this example, like many more, have in them shrouded the mysteries of the kingdom that help us. We engage these mysteries. It is because of this provision that the Bible says, for we know. They don't know, but we know. We are in the kingdom, and we know that all things, how many things? can work together. Not for the good of everybody. For the good of them that love the Lord and them that are called. Did you ever read in scripture that those he predestined, he called? So who is the called here? It's not just a man of God. We have been called, grafted into glory. The Bible says for such people, the concept of being disadvantaged does not truly exist. In the presence of the mysteries of the kingdom. That's why sometimes you say, God, time has gone and he doesn't pay attention. It's because the provisions to remedy it are, are many. There are too many keys that can bring you back. Listen to me. God can keep you for a while while others are getting their jobs and moving. God says, just stay and know me. And you say, God, but I've already, my life. And God says, look, the kingdom we operate in is a kingdom of light. There are too many keys to bring you where you should have been. That's why when we don't trust God because we compare ourselves with others, the Bible says, and they comparing themselves with themselves are not wise. Is God speaking to us now? Yes. So you come to God and say, Lord, I lost one billion. He will not even answer you because the concept of, of losses is something leaving you, not leaving the earth. It's still there. And the Bible tells us, listen. Did you read in Ezekiel 37? That once upon a time there was a great army and they all became bones, scattered. You thought they were all gone, but all of them, the bones were there. And under a certain condition, not every condition, under a certain condition, the bones that you thought were dry. The Bible says, son of man, can these bones live? Even the prophet who was already used to spiritual things said, Lord, in this matter, only you, only thou knowest. He says, prophesy to the bones. Watch this. And he spoke to the bones. And the Bible says the bones had him. They started coming one by one. Bone to his bone. Then he says, prophesy upon the four winds. And say, oh wind, breathe upon the slain. And then they became an exceeding great army. So when you say something left you, it didn't leave the earth. That means there is a condition that can make it come back. So that we don't lament like unbelievers. And the basis of our confidence is that we, we understand that in the economy of God, there is a way to do anything. Alas, master, for it was borrowed. 
And he said, no problem. Where fell it? And the axe head float. It floated right to the top and he picked it up. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.